here with Nouveau Rockstar, Trey Fletcher, Biennesito Estate winemaker and general manager in Block ZB. So you've seen us in Block ZA. This is ZB. So historically, it goes X Block ZA. Everybody liked it. So the Miller said, "Well, let's let's plant a ZB." And this was planted in 1995. Trey came to us in 2011 as our estate uh, manager, winemaker. You had your ideas about what you were going to do with Syrah, but having never made Syrah from this site, and never really, um, how do I say this, made it at a, at, a, at a level that you were aspiring to, what was going through your mind then, and how have you changed over the five vintages that you've been here managing this estate uh, vineyard? Yeah, as far as um, viticulturally, I think the, the biggest change has been uh, um, uh, figure, figuring out Syrah, being primarily Chardonnay and Pinot Noir uh, winemaker. Uh, I really only had one thing in my mind, which was uh, don't make a, a Syrah that says, man, this guy makes Syrah just like Pinot Noir. Uh, but that is to say, um, let, the, let the site kind of do most of the talking, um, but but um, being hands-off in the winery, but not hands-off at all in the viticulture. So I think we've gone to uh, more of an open canopy for, for uh, canopy management, uh, trimming the clusters a little more, uh, leaving, getting yields down lower. I found that um, to, make, to make really compelling Syrah, the, the yields that you see on Pinot Noir, you know, you can have a great Pinot Noir at, at um, in the high twos and sometimes the low threes depending on the vintage three tons to the acre Syrah in Santa Maria it's, it's just not there so uh, so lower yields and also um, your excellent excellent advice and knowledge on uh, really low irrigation we actually do have a, a good amount of organic matter in these soils but but more importantly we have uh, uh, basically a loam shale uh, complex over uh, over marine volcanics, which uh, if um, if if worked too much can can be borderline m moderately high vigor, but uh, but as they are now with uh, with a full cover crop, uh, all organic, no herbicide, no tilling of the soil, they're they're really kept in check really well, uh, especially with uh, the minimal amount of uh, of irrigation. Yeah, the soils up here really lend to um, wines that have um, uh, very masculine, masculine tannins. Uh, if, if not careful in the fermenter, they can be pretty aggressive, uh, which which has been kind of a lesson on 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 understanding this site. How do you determine when is the right time to pick? Yeah, so uh, there's like a million things. <laughs> starting with number one. Uh, we're watching the vine all year, and so you can see how the vine's doing, how, how the canopy's holding up, um, so all the indicators of, you know, how the, how the shoots are lignifying, how, uh, if, if, the, if the leaves are, you know, how many of your basil leaves are, are either yellow or, or falling off, or, you know, all those, all those signs, how are the shoot tips, uh, are they still, uh, still going, or have they, have they pretty much stopped? Uh, so those things in the canopy also, you know, uh, uh, we we do sample f fairly continuously, so tasting the juice and looking at the acidity two three times a week, depending. You know the the weather here is so constant that you know as far as bricks goes, w it's a real steady march almost almost every day during harvest, and, unless we get a, a bump in heat or it cools off significantly. Um, it's it's mostly being concerned with. What, where's the pH going? Where's the titratable acidity? And how much malic do we have? Um, on top of flavor, obviously, and tannins. Usually, the, the sugar is not terribly important to me. We, we generally find that we like the tannins and the flavors of the, of the grapes anywhere from, you know, it's, we usually pick in mid-October. And, yeah. it, and that, that usually shows up for us to use bricks as a, as a barometer, which isn't a great one, but anywhere from 22 to 24 bricks. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's you know, roughly a, a, a 10 to 14 day span for us. We know, we know we're going to be picking in there somewhere and it's just waiting for the tannins 
and the flavors to get there. Acidity is, is really second and sugar is, is distant. These rows run mostly east-west. So what we discovered was there is some difference between the north side fruit and the south side. Uh, when Trey and I first started working together, he expressed an, a desire to pick them separately. Because it is east-west, um, it, it, it's planted, as Stephanie Terizzi, the brilliant Stephanie, pointed out to me, the whole block shaped like a big smile. So, um, so what we did to counteract that is we thought, oh hey, we'll, we'll track the north side and the south side of the canopy uh, differently because as the sun tracks and comes over the mountain range, uh, the exposure is, is significantly different. And so we've always picked those separately. We farm them kind of as two different units and then we, uh, we, we age them separately, we ferment them separately, we, uh, we, uh, we generally blend them together. But um, they're two different beasts. For how, sure. how so? Well, you know, counter to what we, you know, we were assuming, we assumed that on the south side of the canopy, um, the fruit would have um, riper tannins, um, less acidity, higher sugar, better color, and all of those were true except for the tannins. We've we found the tannins on the, the north side to be significantly finer and, uh, and and much rounder, less um, less kind of ferocious. And as far as flavors and tannin development goes, we generally find ourselves picking um, picking them uh, uh, about a week apart. Uh, so generally, we know that we're going to use whole cluster every year. It's just uh, what percentage of whole cluster are we going to do? Uh, we we like uh, you know aromatics and and the, the texture, the, the flavor, and and um, and um, also the the pH change that whole cluster can give to our wines. And so we've looked at the clusters and the vines all season long. We've seen how how they've developed, how the season's been, and. Uh, at that point, we'll have a pretty good idea of what the pH of the must is going to be, and 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 um, and uh, tartaric acid, and what and potassium levels. And so, at that point, we'll kind of make a, a judgment on what percentage of whole cluster to use, and uh, to stem the rest, we'll have certain areas that we'll have deemed better for whole cluster, and uh, and other areas better for destemming. So we'll go through, we'll uh, we'll sort the clusters pull out all the good nice whole um, whole bunch nice healthy clusters for for whole cluster uh, portion of the ferment and then the rest uh, if there's anything you know spindly or um, or stringy as far as cluster morphology goes which is common in in this block of Syrah we will uh, we'll just stem that part uh, generally with Syrah Syrah's for someone who makes primarily Pinot Noir, Syrah always seems like a couch potato to me. It's it's really slow to to get going, and uh, and it really takes its time until you kind of like really push it push it off towards the end, and, and then uh, then it, it really takes over the world towards the end of ferment, which is generally, I mean, three weeks total okay. tank time, a couple days of cold soak, not not too long. Uh, basically, our only cold soak is is waiting for the the native yeast to to kick it in gear and and start gobbling up sugar. All all, all native all the time. All native all the time. The wine basically doesn't get any punch downs. It's almost exclusively pump overs. It's very rare that we'll do a punch down maybe once during the ferment if if we don't feel that that uh, the extraction is is where it should be for that step in the fermentation it's, it's mostly about tan, tannin management at that point or and, and or extraction yeah yeah you know because when we taste the ferment in the morning you know we'll be looking at the bricks just to see where we are in the temperature and tasting it and knowing where the tannins are where's where's the fermentation at in this stage where do we want to be for extraction and that's uh that's where we'll say oh we either need to throw in another pump over or or uh or a delastage or a punch down. Generally, it's a pump over. We, we don't really do too many delastages and uh, hardly any punch downs. Yeah, so uh, we, uh, we use all French oak, generally 25 to 30% new, uh, new oak. Uh, as many large barrels as we can, uh, as we can utilize. Uh, so 
350 to, to now 500 liter barrels primarily, and but also 228s, uh, just because we don't have that many large format barrels. Elevage, uh, we're generally 16, 16 months roughly, so we're, I'd say we're, we're, we're a little on the shorter track. We've done longer, I found the wines have gotten a bit tired. So usually Elevage, the wine stays unsulfured almost the, its whole life uh, on the lees. Maybe we'll rack it once very aeratively and uh, go back to barrel. It'll sit in barrel. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll leave it in barrel almost until we bottle it. And we'll, we'll put the blend together, um, uh, rack it off of the lees. Uh, it's, it's generally been unfined, but not every year. Uh, we, we definitely never filter it though. And and uh, we don't, you know, because it's such a such a such an excellent spot. We, we don't have to do much to the wine besides a bump of sulfur, a couple bumps of sulfur throughout its life, and um, and that's it. So no water, no acid, no enzymes, no filtration, no uh, no nothing. No nothing. Excellent.